basically um, the fog will lift and I know in Guernsey that's something that's very relevant to all of us because it, um, as Greg said it can be a metaphor but also it can be the fog within your head and I don't know I'm sure that most of you in this room have woken up one day and you know sometimes you think oh my gosh this is terrible like this this fog in my head just won't lift and um, yeah so I'm gonna bring you through my story of when I suffered from um, a fog which I thought was never going to lift and I'm going to tell you how I've managed to get myself out of that and how I've used art as one of my main things which has um, pushed me forward. So here we go. So um, yes, this was me 10 years ago um, at the Royal London Hospital. Um, unfortunately um, for me I had not seen a way out. I thought, my gosh, the fog is never going to lift. I didn't speak out about how I was feeling. I kept everything inside. I put on this brave face, and I was like, yeah, I'll be fine. I was doing my fine art degree, and, you know, basically, um, to cut a long story short, I decided to jump in front of an underground train. And I ended up with a fractured skull, ribs, and femur, and I was in hospital for three months, and you know it was, it was it was terrible. But luckily, you know, I'm here to to tell my story. Um, so you know, this is what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, after a couple of weeks of being at the Royal London Hospital, I was airlifted back to the uh, Princess Elizabeth Hospital in Guernsey, and um, you know, both places I got such amazing treatment um, from all spectrums and you know my family and my friends were so supportive I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for that group of people so basically um, when I was in hospital um, I was given a, a piece of paper I was given some pencils because obviously you know my friends and my family thought well Sean wants to get back into doing art and everything again and this is what I was producing. And as an artist my whole life, I was so frustrated that I couldn't draw, like, you know, as, as well as I thought I could. And, and you know, these, these were coming out of my head, but I just couldn't get any, any perspective or any, anything that looked real. And um, this was a lady who would sit next to my bed. Basically, she was to ensure that I didn't make any more suicide attempts or anything while I was in hospital. And I can remember looking at this, this drawing and just thinking, oh, I didn't capture her as well as I wanted to, and just, you know, being hard on myself. Um, but then the fog did start lifting. And um, it was actually, um, when I was in hospital, I was approached by somebody in the room who um, worked for Headway, and she um, said to me, Sean, you know, maybe uh, you could come and be a service user at Headway and everything. And I was like, you know, that's um, that would be great. But luckily for me, um, my life started to turn around, and I can remember getting my first haircut after my accident with my, my head injury, and, you know... <laughs> <laughs> obviously um, the wonderful lady who cut my hair is in the room as well today and you know I was so self-conscious about the scar on my head but you know just having my hair styled back and having just somebody who was you know non-judgmental and everything just meant everything so then my confidence started coming back and uh, as a result of that I ended up working for Headway helping the service users with art classes and so basically, um, this is, um, I received occupational therapy while I was at um, Princess Elizabeth Hospital. And then I was asked to produce a series of paintings for the new occupational therapy department. And I was given an open, open thing to just do whatever I thought was appropriate. So I thought, why not do some ants carrying some milk? <laughs> That's obviously a great thing. But, um, so, yeah, and then obviously there's a, a big cake that the ants had made. Um, this is one of the OTs there, and, um, you know, a robot, a camper van. I'd like to produce art which gets people thinking, and there's not an obvious narrative sometimes. And then 
further down the line, I was asked to um, do pieces of work in between the, um, the children's ward and Victoria Wing. And um, the narrative was to bring the outside in. So I thought something that obviously most of us can relate to in Guernsey is Guernsey French. And sometimes, you know, I just looked up these quotes and I thought, yeah, they're just really, um, you know, inspiring quotes to say, to say the least. So obviously in donkeys could relate to Guernsey. So one must look further than the end of one's nose. And as, you know, being in hospital myself, I thought these uplifting kind of um, images would help people if they're wandering around, um, you know, the, the, the wards, um, seek and you shall find. Um, it's necessary occasionally to jump over hedges to catch up with the rest. And one must choose one's tide. Um, so, um, yeah, as Greg said, um, I've been living for the last four years in London, um, which has given me a great opportunity to see the different um, ways of living. And, you know, I've also um, seen street artwork and um, this is one that really struck a chord with me because um, last year, unfortunately, I lost my father to, to cancer and, and that was such a difficult time for me. And I was out walking, walking um, Honey, our dog, and um, I came across these posters and it was just great to think I'm not the only one that's going through this, you know, this time um, where I'm having really difficult feelings. Um, because sometimes in, in London or even like walking down the high street, you can imagine that everybody else is feeling fantastic and you're the only one that like, feels like you're stuck in this, this shell. So I started um, seeing, seeing these um, and this links in well with what Ali was saying just before, stop being so British and say what you think. Um, so this inspired me. Um, I thought, well, maybe I could bring something like this to Guernsey because, you know, I think it's great to have people speak out and not feel like they're alone. Um, so I related back to, to older work that I'd done. And uh, this is a piece by Barbara Kruger. I, I don't know if you know of her, but she's a, she was a pop artist. And, you know, her work is obviously... Um, she's a strong feminist, but um, also, you know, the text in work, I think, has such a strong narrative. Um, it's Bob and Roberta Smith, who's also inspired me, um, you know, using text in artwork, and, you know, these quotes are fantastic. Um, David Shrigley, you know, I just love his, his human narrative and his sketches and his, his writing, which was um, the same as Andy Leake used in his Notes to Strangers. Um, so, yeah, this was when I was, um, <laughs> this was when I was at uni um, the first time round and I was doing my fine art degree and I was in, I had a brief to do um, some artwork in Bournemouth Lower Gardens and walking around the gardens I'd see that there were signs saying like no ball games, no cycling and I thought oh this is all like you know what, what are you meant to do in a park. So then I was thinking how this kind of stems because the parks are obviously Victorian and Victorians can kind of you know blah blah blah. <laughs> anyway I won't go into that. But um, so I was thinking of like social ways of how you uh, taught how to act and stuff like that when you're out in public. So obviously, no flatulence and it just ended up to be next to the balloon. Um, that was public displays of emotion prohibited. Um, warning self-consciousness in operation. Um, and with these signs in Bournemouth, I must say that I respect and appreciate the signs that I've put up in Guernsey because the public have been fantastic with them. The only worst thing that I've found is some tomato ketchup splashed on one of them and that was down by Follies, so you know that was must have squirted from a burger or something. But in Bournemouth these were nicked, they were like chucked around, I was like oh gosh. So yeah, on to um, Notes to Islanders, um, it's a terrible picture of me, but um, yeah so basically um, I got in contact um, with Russ Fossey at the Guernsey Arts Commission and um, Emily Litton from Guernsey Mind. And they were both totally behind me in doing this project where I came up with different quotes to put around um, Guernsey um, to get people to feel like they're not alone. And um, so there we go, the fog will lift. Um, 
Art is good for your mental health, which I will go on to in a bit. Um, healing has ups and downs. Um, believe in yourself rather than believe in yourself. This was the one that ended up with ketchup on because it was by Follies. Um, <laughs> kindness changes everything, which is so true. Um, storms don't last forever, which, you know, um, again, could be used as a metaphor as the storms that were predicted this weekend, but obviously they didn't, <laughs> they didn't come, but, you know, storms in your head as well. Um, friends come and go, only a precious few hold on, and, you know, I find that really a strong point for me. Um, I, my friends have been so supportive, it's been amazing. Um, and small steps equal big changes, um, wonderful, and the past is past, and you know, sometimes it's hard to let go of things that have happened in the past or relate things that have happened in the past to what's going to happen in the future when it's a totally different ball game. Um, so then, after those signs, I was um, able to have a private view at um, Space 10, which is in, in a market where they have exhibitions now on a regular basis and that was fantastic because I was joined by Emily and Russ and we all gave um, a talk and um, you know luckily my phone didn't go off I'm not gonna say which one of theirs did while they were giving their talk but anyway sorry Emily <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, yeah so then then I um, was part of the Arts Sunday, and this was also uh, another big changing point in, in my life, um, because it was after this that I decided to move back to Guernsey from London. And, um, you know, it was great, just I had these little cards which were in the box, and people could, like, pick them out like it was Lucky Dip, and they would have the, the um, Storms Don't Last Forever or little sayings like that, and, and it was amazing seeing how it resonated with people and they pick it out and be like, oh my gosh, this is exactly how I was feeling today or something like that. And then people would start speaking and it, it was great. So then I was asked um, if I'd be happy to put my signs at Chaos Festival and, you know, that was the beginning of an amazing summer with lots of live music and I met lots of new people and it was just fantastic. And, you know, music and art for me are just such, have such a strong connection. Um, so, you know, it was at the Vela Fair and um, um, KPMG Castle Nights and, um, you know, it was at Pride, um, <coughs> the Scarecrow Festival, like so many places. Um, it was wonderful. And um, so, yeah, basically to, to come, come to a close now, um, I've been um, recently... Um, I've opened up a shop slash gallery, which has been amazing because this has been my dream. And um, it's up Mill Street. It's small but perfectly formed. And, um, you know, I've been so lucky to have my friends help me with, the, you know, the installation of the, the text. And now I've now got a shelf at the bottom and everything. And I'm going to be holding art classes there. And for me, one of my main things, especially after being in hospital and feeling like I'd lost the ability to draw or create art, I think sometimes this holds people back from being creative because they think, oh, you know, I'm not going to be able to do anything, I'm, I'm not talented, I'm rubbish, whatever. I think anybody can make art as long as they've got the materials. So, you know, this is something that I want to push forward and Hopefully, um, I'll have different exhibitions here and it will bring more life to, to Mill Street. And um, yeah, I'm just following the dream. And thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you.